In early February 2023, I had the question swirling around in my thoughts, is this the injury that sidelines my shoulder forever? Will I have to completely change my approach to training? Is this the one that will finally send me under the knife for surgery? I'm getting personal today, but this story will highlight for you why periodic deloads are so important in training and what happens when you push it too far. Let me tell you what happened to me earlier this year when I rode intensity and volume too hard and for too long. Let's rewind back to late 2019. I was training fairly hard at Revival Strength headquarters. I was pushing my intensity and enjoying my life as a new dad and husband. I was still regularly lifting weights near my all-time best lifts ever. I'd even set some PRs in 2019. These were hard and rare to come by after 10 years of training the way I had been. I was happily living the look good, move well life, still with a little bit of a bias towards performance. Then in early 2020, the global pandemic hit. China has identified the cause of the mysterious new virus. Coronavirus. Suddenly, we were stay-at-home parents with full-time young kids to care for. We also had to work full-time and manage an active, healthy lifestyle. It was packed. Movement and training hard were still priorities, but time was a big constraint. Trying to push my lifting and intensity in the gym, aka Marcus's backyard, just wasn't as important. It was also too hard on a stressed out system to do that to my body every single day. So instead I opted for 80% intensity. I did lots of walking with my kids and wife and had a very regimented diet. We weren't eating out and there were no dinner parties due to lockdowns. The result was that in 2020, my body transformed quite a bit. I got the leanest I'd ever been in my life. And I started to enjoy this focus, moderately hard training, very structured dieting, and more of the look good, move well life biased towards aesthetics. Sometime in late 2021 and early 2022, things started to feel off. I was feeling lower energy than I wanted. I recognized that I was becoming too food focused in my life. It was likely the result of being focused on leanness rather than performance for a bit too long. I hadn't been going to the gym with a focus on performance for any sustained period of time for over a year now. The road to changing this focus and swinging the balance back towards the middle hasn't been quick or easy. But on a trip last fall in 2022, I got some much needed inspiration. I felt the spark to come back to my training with a renewed focus on performance. And I'd need to eat to support that however possible, even if it meant a little more body fat or not being as razor sharp lean. I ramped things up quickly. I started to channel my old competitive self. My training intensity was up. My resolve to push myself was there like it hadn't been in years. And the physical stress I was under jumped up significantly. But the rest of my life hadn't changed that much. Yeah, the kids were back in school and we weren't in lockdown, but work and family life are as busy and demanding as ever. I turned up the noise on one stressor in my life, the physical stress, but I wasn't turning down the noise in any other area. I did my best to ramp up my recovery practices, at least some. I also was fueling with more calories and carbohydrates than any recent year. So I was trying to mitigate the added physical stress with better recovery. But I could tell that my right shoulder, a formerly injured shoulder on numerous occasions, was starting to feel super cranky and pissed off. But I didn't let up. I only started to do a little bit more specific warm up and mobility, yet the total stress equation remained the same. I just kept pushing. Then on February 1st, my shoulder yelled at me to stop. Yep, I was in pain like I hadn't felt in years. I had to slow down immediately, and I told myself to take a week off. But after a week, it felt worse than it did on day one. So one week off turned into two weeks off. Then it was clear I wasn't gonna be using my shoulder in any intense way anytime soon. So I needed to get back to movement, but in a revised way. These setbacks are some of the hardest times in my life to navigate. My sense of self is so connected to movement. My life flow revolves around being a training athlete. My connection to my work is intimately tied to how I have historically interacted with my training on a daily and weekly basis. Moreover, my mood, energy levels, sleep, and relationships have all been closely tied to the pursuit of movement and training. 
What if I can never go back to expressing myself the way I used to? Certain injuries have been significant enough in my life to make me ask this question. I had one of those in college when I blew out my back. I had a knee injury after college that made me question the same thing. Then there were a few re-injuries of my back and knee in my competitive CrossFit years that had me questioning it yet again. Finally, there was 2016, the year I retired and when my right shoulder was in pain and every single day and night was brutal. That was the last time I remember having this thought. The funny thing is that injury back in 2016 was the catalyst for what functional bodybuilding is today. It sparked a new approach to my training that led to the method we now call functional bodybuilding. Deep questions like this and the fears that I associate with them always lead me down a path of evaluation. I rethink and take stock of what matters most. It is at times like these, when I'm injured, that I always begin to appreciate the simple joys of just being healthy. Why do we take for granted our health when we feel good, but then suddenly have a deep appreciation for it when it is in question? Why are we waiting for injury to make us appreciate what we've already got? This was a story of trying to chase too many things simultaneously and ramping up very fast. This was a story about not listening to my body and taking the necessary deloads to keep me progressing yet feeling good. This was a story about pushing through positions and discomfort because I was getting attached to some outcome rather than seeking a sustainable process. Even as an experienced coach who objectively could have looked at some of what I was doing as overly ambitious, I wasn't able to see what I was overreaching at for too long. I had blinders on for most of January. I was having too much fun getting after it and reconnecting with my old training self to realize that I was really neglecting a part of my body that has some underlying damage from years ago. It took an injury to make me reevaluate my approach. My hope is that you don't repeat my mistakes. That is one of the biggest drivers for me as a coach. By sharing knowledge, I hope to help you develop your own ability to think critically about your health, fitness, and nutrition. But even the smartest and most well-educated people can fall into a rut. If and when that does happen, we are here to support you and get back on track. However, you can start by just forgiving yourself for ending up here. I certainly felt guilt and shame for letting it get this far, but that doesn't do anyone any good. And it certainly wasn't helping me in my recovery. So I had to take my own advice and just forgive. Where are we at now? Well, I just got back from Mexico for three days to celebrate our friend's wedding. I took my Mark Pro recovery device with me and my TheraBand in my backpack. I had my portable red light therapy device. I brought my full supplement stack so I could get the best sleep and recovery possible. I mapped out the gym at the hotel in advance to think about how I can get my rehab and strength work done on my shoulder. And as always, we traveled with high quality food so that we didn't have to rely on airport snacks. My shoulder has improved significantly since February. I've been to see the local physical therapist three times and I've done a lot of self-care. I dialed back my training on the upper body for a full month before trying anything intense. Even when I did reintroduce stuff, I stuck with movements that didn't cause pain and that I can control. I kept the painful ranges of motion, passive, and for light movement and only mobility. I have continued to push my training in my lower body throughout this time. Despite those workouts being my favorite and best workouts of the week, I've been mindful to take planned deloads from them as well. I don't want to overreach and wind up with a lower body tweak at the same time. This time has allowed me to reconnect with certain aspects of my training that I missed. I've been including much more of the following into my weekly workouts to build back stability into my upper body. I've been doing heavy carries a couple days a week, including farmer's carries with 150 pound kettlebells and kettlebell rack carries or heavy sandbag carries with 70 to 100 pound. I've been doing ring supports, both in the plank position and in the dip support position for isometric strength and stability in my shoulders. I've been performing passive and active hangs almost daily. Overhead positions and scapular elevation have been some of the most painful positions. So spending some time with my body stretched from the bar has been really therapeutic and helpful. And lastly, I've been doing a lot of swings and snatches with the kettlebell. Kettlebell swings and snatches have been a nice weekly tool to work on shoulder endurance, straight arm strength, and dynamic power lifts to slowly build my shoulder back up to tolerating this well. I hope what you take away from this is that your body is incredibly resilient and it will also serve you best over the long term when you take care of it well. 
That means pulling back intentionally from time to time to allow your muscles to heal and recover and to keep your passion for training high instead of grinding yourself down. I have a detailed post on my website answering all your questions about taking a deload plus a sample deload week of training. So go visit functional-bodybuilding.com to look good, move well, and keep training strong for decades. Oh,